Hello viewers, welcome back to free engineering tutorial on operating system. In previous video, we had discussed about introduction of module 1. In this video, we will talk about computer system organization and how is it connected to compute operating system. So here, we will look at several parts of this structure to round out the background knowledge. So firstly, we will talk about how system is booted. So uh, when it is powered up or rebooted, it needs to have an initial program to run. This initial program is called bootstrap program. Okay, so it tends to be simple. It is stored in ROM because at that time only ROM is present or visible on the computer system. So ROM or EEP ROM is used, which is known as firmware. Now. This initializes all aspects of system from CPU registers to device controllers or to memory contents. So all the resources are initialized at this point of time in booting. After that, after this bootstrap program loads the operating program must locate and load into memory. So after bootstrap program is initialized or executed operating system must locate on the system and load into memory so generally operating system is not present on rom it is present in hard disk or means uh, you can say that it is uh, present in secondary memory okay it is not present in primary memory so it should be taken to the uh, primary memory and then executed and then occurrence of an event is usually signaled by an interrupt okay so what are interrupts if there is an event to be occurred then devices will show a, or signal an interrupt to gain the attention of os a device uses interrupt done by using system call so this system call we will look further in our next videos so now we will talk about what are storage structures so to get executed computer program must present in main memory as i told you it should be present in main memory at the time of execution it is basically present in secondary memory but it should come first in main memory then executed and a typical instruction execution file as executed on a system with a von Neumann architecture. So this von Neumann architecture we had already studied in computer organization which supports that firstly instruction should be fetched it, uh, then its instruction registers will issue an store command after that decoding and fetching will be done from memory then after instruction done on operands and uh, then store result to memory again. So this is the hierarchy of storage devices. So here you can see that firstly registers have smallest memory and then cache memory and then after that main memory comes then electronic disk have greater memory in comparison to all these three and magnetic disk which we can say that these are secondary memory and magnetic tapes this is this you can uh, means understand as tertiary memory so this is the hierarchy of storage device hierarchy now talking about input output structure so here two reasons are very much needs to be understood because of its importance to reliability and performance of system os code is dedicated to managing input output so these are the two reasons why os should give preference to manage input output devices uh, first reason is to importance to reliability and performance second reason is because of varying nature of devices there may be keyboard there may be mouse or any other input device or output devices so th these are asynchronous devices at which time input or output will be held user or operating system itself didn't know so because of this reason OS is dedicated. So here what is happening is that this thread is in execution can fetch input output request data from the device and device can signal interrupt and the device can also work with use of direct memory access which you have studied in computer organization 
and uh, this direct memory access will be just connected to full memory and uh, from here data can be or signals can be passed after that threads can ex execute instructions and share the data from the memory so this is called input output structure or how a modern computer system works okay so the they can be connected with scsi and uh, os have device driver for each device controller so as you know that at the time of ins installation there are several device drivers which have to be installed first on the computer to run different input output objects okay so this is the same for that so talking about single processor system so single processor system is the simplest type of processor system in which every computer system has, has its own processor okay so in single processor system there is one main cpu capable of executing a general purpose instruction okay so almost all system have other special pro purpose processor as well after that all of these special purpose processors run a limited instruction so here it is important that only limited instruction set is executed by single processor system and do not run user program when they are managed by os in that os sends them information about their next task and monitors their status so here the use of os is just to monitor and provide the information okay sends this information and monitors now talking about multi processor system so it is the extended version of single processor system so in multi processor system many processors can access the memory at a single instant of time as you can see in this diagram there are different cpus which are accessing the memory at the same time so advantage is that we will harness increased throughput because at the same time many programs or many processes can execute so after that we can say that these uh, these are economical also because economy of scale means uh, many programs can be executed at single point of time and with different processors so this is economy of scale after that increased reliability what do you mean by increased reliability is that if one cpu let's say this cpu is failed to execute then these are the cpus or processors which are executing at that instant of time so uh, the processor or execution is not blocked by any single cpu failure so yes so this is multi processor systems failure condition in which ability to continue providing service proportional to the level of surviving hardware okay if one cpu is failed to executed others are giving equivalent performance as the full operating system or or full system is giving so this is called graceful degradation after that if the system go beyond graceful degradation are called fault tolerant fault tolerant means if the system is giving equivalent uh, equivalent output as the full uh, fully working or successfully working system is giving the output so this, these are called fault tolerant because they can tolerate the fault in the processors now multi processors are of two types so here we can take analogy as one is asymmetric multi processor second is symmetric multi processor so asymmetric multi processor can be understood as these are similar to the client server architecture of computer networking so here you can see that master slave type of communication as that was happening in client server architecture where master processor schedules and allocates work to slave processor so it is a type of client server architecture on other hand symmetric multi processor no master slave communication okay so here the work will be done by the peers and no master slave relationship will happen in this type of operating system now talking about clustered system so it is again a, an extended version of 
multiprocessor systems here as uh, you can see that in multiprocessor system all cpus or all processors are at the same location but in clustered systems cpu can be situated or present on different geographical locations they can be separated by miles away or two so like multiprocessor system clustered system gather together multiple cpus to accomplish computational work so they can be connected through lan or wan uh, large area network and wide area network cs used to provide cs means clustered system so used to provide high availability service that is service will be continued even if one system fail so as we uh, we had seen there in one if one cpu failed then the system is executing in perfect normal way here if one system is failed fully computer system is failed other systems can take uh, can take on their work and try to execute the program like multi processors cs also have two types asymmetric clustering and symmetric mode so here in asymmetric clustering what is happening is that one machine is in standby mode other one is running if this one is fail to execute it will take on the work and try to complete the task okay so as it is written here one will be active host which is being monitored by passive host so which is waiting for the failure of this, that computer system it is known as passive and uh, one which is executing is called active when active gets filled passive becomes active after that on the other hand symmetric mode states that two or more hosts are running application and are monitoring each other okay so here concurrent work is going on it is necessary to run more than one system at a time so cs can also be clustered using wan as i told you the clusters which have systems installed miles apart so they can be installed on different geographical locations and can be managed by storage area network so that allow many system to attach to a pool of net storage and talking about multi programming so multi programming means one of most important aspect of os is ability to multi program at the same time different programs can be executed on processor or computer system so multi program increases cpu utilization by organizing jobs so that the cpu always has one to execute at at all instant of time at least one program is there for execution by the cpu multi programming systems provide an environment in which various system resources are utilized effectively but they do not provide for user interaction with the computer systems so no need of explanation of this point and uh, time sharing is a logical extension so this time sharing is important it is a logical extension of mp means multi programming executes multiple job switching among them so if we have to execute different jobs we have to keep account of sharing of time between different programs time sharing require interactive clustering system or computer system that provides direct communication between the user and systems user gives instruction directly using input output device such as keyboard or mouse and response time should be smaller than 1 second it is understood that if we are giving any input or output we should get response in less than 1 second then only the system will be interactive or else it will not be interactive so here you can see that a time shared os uses cpu scheduling and M multi you can see that multi programming is mp so to provide each user with a small portion of a time shared computers each user has at least one separate program in memory so in program in memory is called process okay so we had uh, different module dedicated to process so we will see there what is process job pool what is job pool a pool of jobs like you can see that this is a pool of job so as in general main memory is too small to accommodate all jobs the jobs are kept initially on the disk in job pool what is job scheduling 
if several jobs are ready to be brought so if there are different jobs we have to schedule accordingly which should come first or which should come at after the first or second swapping in time sharing system the os must ensure reasonable response to them uh, which is sometimes accomplished through swapping here processes are swapped in and out of memory so swapping of process is the usually described in this paragraph so yeah in next video we will talk about os operation before that i want to tell you that the study materials which are used in this slide or this video will be available in the uh, link description of the last video of this module so stay tuned till then thank you